Do you like the isolation, bud? Love it. Yeah. Yeah. You could live in isolation. I could, yeah. <laughs> That's my thing now. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd Desiree go? <laughs> she lives out in an atoll with these fishermen. We're gonna move in with Alan and the lobster gang. <laughs> Man, those are some nice butts. Yeah, we've been getting into the habit of playing every morning. What game are we playing? Gin Rummy. Today we're just gonna get the boat ready. We decided to leave tomorrow to go back to the mainland. Um, or at least to the main barrier reef. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, we're going to more islands. Yeah. They're just closer to the mainland. Yeah, <laughs> we're heading back towards the mainland. There you go. Just gonna kinda get the boat ready for it. All right, bud, what's for breakfast? Well, we're having leftover um, permit and curry from last night. We also had some chub from the other night, which I breaded because chubs are herbivores, so they eat a lot of like algae. So their meat is like kind of like greenish um, and just kind of grossed me out. I know it shouldn't, but um, to kind of like mask the color of it, I breaded it. So um, that's what Jordan's having. A little, a little piece of permit and then a nice fleshy chub. So how does the permit taste? Really good. It's like a, it's a little bit tough, um, but it's a nice white flaky fish. Well, it's not flaky, but it's it's like a white tough fish. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was delicious. Yeah. We're gonna feast off the bounty of the sea. Yeah. What's the score, bud? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but you're winning by a lot. So it is our last day in paradise and we're gonna spend it kind of getting the boat ready so that tomorrow we can totally enjoy a day of sailing. Um, so what I'm doing right now is just kind of organizing the galley and our provisions. Um, because we live in such a small boat, we can't really fit a lot of fresh produce on board and so I have to be really, really vigilant about things that are going bad. Um, so just to show you real quick, um, this is what we have left of our like root vegetables. Um, one, one red onion, one white onion, ginger, and then two heads of cabbage. And then over here is where I keep things that shouldn't really be in the sun at all. So quite a few apples. Um, I think I have two potatoes back here. I also learned from the Boat Galley cookbook that you should never store um, potatoes and onions together because when they like interact in some nasty way and create like a disgusting slime that smells horrendous. So I like to keep them really far away from each other. <laughs> and then I've also got, let's see, got two tomatoes which is really exciting. To me, tomatoes when you're out in the middle of nowhere can go a really long way in making a meal that's like predominantly like canned meat or just some fish taste nice and fresh. So I'm excited about those tomatoes and I actually got this container way back in uh, Mexico at the Costco over there. And I just kept it and I clean it out and I like it because it keeps um, any other tomatoes that I buy nice and kind of protected from getting squashed. All right, what else do we have here? <laughs> a cucumber and a squash. And both of these I bought at a place that didn't refrigerate the produce initially, uh, which I found makes them last so much longer. Um, I did buy two zucchinis, big, big zucchinis, um, that were already refrigerated and I stored them in our refrigerator and they went bad within like the first, I don't know, like five days or so. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I think this is called like a winter squash or winter zucchini or something. These can last I feel like a month or so without going bad so see over here is all of our leftovers that I'm gonna go through right now and kind of get rid of um, and these are super cool they're collapsible Tupperware so when they're when I'm done with them they like shrink to like like maybe an inch or two here's an example of one that's collapsed and I keep them all back here Another kind of neat feature of these collapsible Tupperware is uh, when I have food that like could easily be condensed to be stowed in the galley, the Tupperware actually help me condense it without having it leak everywhere. So I'll show you what I mean. You can essentially condense it 
So you just open up these lids and kind of push it down, clip it in, and then it is about an inch and a half thick. And then you can stick it in the refrigerator and take up way less space. Let's see what I have in the refrigerator. Do -do -do. Um, I've been getting really into making cold brew tea, so this one is Jordan's chai tea and I've got black peppermint tea. I also found two beers, so keeping those for uh, hopefully at the end of the day tomorrow once we get to our uh, destination. And then I've got uh, broccoli, which is awesome, uh, a couple of carrots, um, some root vegetables that are opened, and then some cheeses and lunch meats. And then below all of that, I've got the fish that we just caught. Uh, nice and filleted so we're pretty set for probably could probably go for another five to seven days eating pretty well um, I'm really excited about how this kind of like provisioning experiment worked out this time around I bought a ton of dried beans two different kinds of lentils black beans those are sunflower seeds for when we're underway got kidney beans and then some white beans and green beans and rice back there we went through a lot of beans <laughs> and uh, a lot of vegetables and then luckily we were able to catch a lot of fish so we didn't go through nearly as much uh, canned uh, tuna or canned chicken as I thought we would so it's been a pretty successful trip as far as the galley I'm really really stoked about how that worked out so oh <laughs> I'm gonna make a uh, fish head soup actually this is a hogfish so we'll see how that goes <laughs> Desiree is ready to rock. <laughs> she is ready to roll. <laughs> Nuzzly in the morning. Six in the morning, and we are off to Southwater K, and we're going to say goodbye to the offshore atolls. So, do you have anything you want to say to Lighthouse Reef, bud? Um, thanks for all the fish. Thanks. For <laughs> do you like the isolation, bud? Love it. Yeah. Yeah. You could live in isolation. I could, yeah. <laughs> That's my thing now. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd Desiree go? Oh, she doesn't go off the boat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she lives out in an atoll with these fishermen. You know, moving with Alan and the lobster gang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And yeah, it makes me think like before we came to Belize, you know, a lot of people were like, ah, oh, don't bother stopping in Belize. It's like really dangerous and expensive and there's not much to do but and the reef is unhealthy is what we heard a lot oh yeah you're right it has been expensive and there is an undertone of like um crime i would say you know we're so close to belize city and a lot of people who have been in prison or jail in belize city uh come out to the islands in the north at least in kikakar and san pedro and end up working there and the atolls even here most of the men we've met have been to prison before and so there is a little bit of an undertone of kind of like oh boy this isn't cookie cutter island life the gidget's mine that being said it does give the place character and i don't know like meeting people who have been to prison the ones that we encounter they've like turned their lives around and you know started um different way of living and kind of escape to the islands to get away from all of that so it's also inspiring to meet them so yeah anyways all that being said coming out to the atolls has been really cool because we're even farther away from belize city so i feel like the farther away you get from belize city like the the more comfortable it gets like crime wise at least in my head <laughs> yeah all right time to go we gotta get moving Without my love for the ocean A devotion brings me down. All right, so we are motoring through that cut in the reef that we took to get in here. Um, much more pleasant today than it was when we motored up in here a couple days ago. So because we need to get to Southwater Key by about two in the afternoon, 
because we want to be able to see the reef really well when we go in through the pass, um, we had to leave here at about 6 in the morning. And 6 in the morning is not the best light to see the reef in this pass. So we're relying on our GPS track getting in here. Um, but when we came in here, I was real careful to make sure that this pass wasn't tricky. So when we came in, I was looking for like coral heads in the middle of the pass and whatnot, and there wasn't any. So as long as we're relatively in the pass, which is quite large, uh, then, then we're good to go. And you know, the GPS has a inaccuracy of maybe 15 feet. So that's plenty of leeway to not hit anything on our way out of here. so good to be outside without having to like be covered up from the sun you know yeah it's like a little bit of a breeze and the sun's not really that strong oh it feels really good i know yeah nighttime and early morning sailing yeah it's just the best in the tropics in the tropics <laughs> yeah okay bring her down to neutral and kill the engine how are we going five knots? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, under the jib alone. Yeah. And it's a windy day. Yeah, it feels good. I saw flying fish too. And your blood is in the water as you go straight through my heart. just doing a day sale like you know today this should only take eight hours it's good to set watches mm -hmm. and times because hey if if we don't I'll just sort of stay up here the whole time mm -hmm. and then that's fine eight hours of being up here and sailing the boat isn't a lot but I end up being a little bit tired for our, for our landfall and like you got that at that point once you actually get to where you're going and you need to anchor and you need to maneuver you, you got to be a little bit sharp and you can't be too exhausted or cranky. So, or cranky. So we found that if I can at least just have like, you know, two hours at a time where I'm at least not in charge of anything. So I can be up here, but just kind of lay around and relax a little. So. And, and I like having the watch time also because there is limited shade on board. So the way that I see it is kind of like if you're on watch, then you get kind of like the best seat in the cockpit. It's kind of like your privilege yeah. because you're on watch. So we can both fit up here. Um, but it actually works out pretty well when I'm not on watch because I just go straight down below and sleep. <laughs> and then Jordan gets the cockpit to himself and then when I'm ready to come up, he has to figure out somewhere to go. I'm on watch, I'm gonna talk a little bit quietly because I think Jordan just finally fell asleep. It's really nice right out on deck. Got our little shade still up, so I'm completely in the shade, which is awesome. Uh, I've got really great wind. We're on like a broad reach right now, so wind's coming right, funneling right into the cockpit, which is, feels pretty great. We're also in in the lee of um, Glover Reef, so or the Glover Atoll, so um, the sea kind of calmed down again, which is awesome. I love watches like this because they're short it's during the day. There's no real squalls in the distance. Um, and I'm pretty much just waiting until we get there. I haven't had to make too many adjustments. Um, it says on the GPS that we're 0.5 nautical miles to the left of our course. So I'll go ahead and adjust the wind vane so we turn a little bit to the right. Right now the wind's coming from kind of that direction. So if we turn right, um, I just have to be careful that we don't go dead downwind and that we don't jive. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the only thing I'm concerned about right now. All right, let's go ahead and adjust our course. Right now it says 0.5 nautical miles. I'm gonna see if it goes down to 0.4. Looks like we won't be driving, which is good. Looks like we're going a little bit more to the right now. Um, just wait for the 0.5 to go down to 0.4 or 0.3. If it doesn't go down quickly, I'll go ahead and make another adjustment. And I decided to go ahead and try to go away a little bit more. Should be going way more to the right now. Next thing, I'll take a look at the wind vane. Wind vane looks good. When it's up and down, we are heading to the right. Look at our indicator. It looks pretty good. It looks like our course is continuing to go to the right correctly. So right now we are at 0.3 nautical miles to the left of our course. So pretty good. Jordan came up for a little bathroom break, a little potty break. <laughs> so we rigged up the preventer. Here's how our preventer works. Tighten it up right here on the cleat. It runs forward through that block. This block goes forward to the bow. Back here where it connects to the line that is connected back there on the boom. Well, that was a quick sail. That was like five and a half hours, huh? So we see land. I'm up. I'm awake. I'm ready to go. What do you think about turning this boat back around, buddy? The idea of being back on land is unappealing to me at the moment. <laughs> I just like being the only boat out in the middle of nowhere. So I'll get over it once we get to the bar, I'm sure. <laughs> what do I believe? What makes me feel it to write you this song? All right, so we're coming up to Southwater K Pass. So there's the island, Southwater K, and then there's a smaller island right there to the south, and our pass is right in between the two, and uh, we've just got to thread the needle right in between here. Two hours a day, five months and a year. Okay, so we're going over the pass now. This is the shallow bit. Basically, we're right in between the two islands now. So we got some company in this anchorage, it looks like. Um, and because some swell comes in from the pass and wraps around the island, we're gonna kind of head over and anchor north of these catamarans towards the north end of the island. All right, bud, so we're gonna check out this shallow area up ahead. So we'll slow down and then just kind of nose our way up to it. Um, be prepared to turn hard to port to get out of there if, if it gets weird. Okay, neutral. Okay, I think we're gonna drop the hook right here in this sandy bit. We're pretty far from the pass, so hopefully we won't get too much uh, roll going on. All right, let's drop it. I keep asking myself, oh, why do you still hurt? Why do you still hurt? what's that victory drink that you got there? Well, when we were in Isa Mujeres, Kahlua was really cheap, so uh, somebody gave us a big bottle of Kahlua. So I had like this much left of Kahlua and I've been trying to use it for like the last six months. So I made half of a thing of coffee and then we also had one little thing of milk. So this is just coffee, milk, and Kahlua. And it's cold. And yeah. it is. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so we've been getting in the habit of making, or just like putting cold drinks in the refrigerator. It makes such a big difference, like when we're out sailing all day, or when we're in the middle of the sail, or if we go out snorkeling. You know, you just come back and you want something cold. So I'll usually do some kind of uh, herbal tea, and then some kind of caffeinated tea, 
and then at least a bottle of water. And then I started putting our uh, vodka, not our vodka, yeah, our gin and our rum also in little bottles like this in the refrigerator. That way we can have a cold drink at the end of the day without needing ice. And then we also use these little sippy cups. <laughs> Thermoses. To keep it cold. And then we've got our two water bottles, which are both insulated. vacuum insulated. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool because even though we don't have ice or a very big refrigerator we can have cold drinks every day all right bud well let's have a little bit more coffee and clue and go dive on this anchor that sounds right? good <laughs> you keep blowing me out i keep holding you i keep asking myself oh, why do you still one of the local fishing boats. They're motor sailors, basically. Back in the day, they used to just be sailboats, but now they put outboards on them. And they basically just load up with what they call dories, or ba they're basically like canoes, little kayaks. And uh, they've probably got like anywhere from like four to six of them. And then they'll just go to an area with a bunch of patchery for something anchor the big boat and then just send out all the guys you know in the dories to go spear fishing or fishing in the area and i guess the way that these boats actually function there's someone that owns the boat and then all the fishermen will pay the boat owner for a spot on the boat and then you get to keep whatever you catch they are kind of really close i'm not saying Hey guys! Yeah, there's all the dories. They're pretty cool. <laughs> what do I believe? What time is it, buddy? It's beer time. Uh -oh. See you tomorrow, round two. Mm -hmm. Two hours a day, five months mm -hmm. in a year. Oh, I loved you too long. You keep blowing me out, I keep holding you in. Okay. I keep asking. Just arrived, and uh, we were wondering if maybe there's a bar or restaurant on the island. Do you still so cool. Who's wrong? Who's right? I cannot decide because I'm sober tonight. So you have the beer or the stout? I'll have the stout, please. Yeah. Uh, and for me as well. I'm here till it breaks. Oh, how my heart aches. You keep blowing me out, I keep holding you in. I keep asking myself, oh, why do you still hurt? Why do that, this place is ridiculous. It's like literally paradise. I just keep on getting blown away by Belize, you know? Yeah. I thought Half Moon K was awesome. Like, this is just super quaint and like well maintained and gorgeous. Buddy, will you marry me? Sure, bud. Only if you get your act together, though. I will not. Oh, how my heart aches. You keep blowing.
Oh. Betty. Photo bomb. That was a good photo bomb. I was about to get a good shot for B roll. Now you got a good shot for life. Okay, buddy. Watch it. <laughs> Stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> So I just took some paracord that we had and made a sweet little necklace. So I've got an awesome like uh, dirt bag cruiser necklace now. Be like, hey, what's up, man? Oh, this? I'm really into the ocean and like free diving and uh, spear fishing and surfing. This, oh yeah, this is like a piece of like ancient coral that I found in the atolls off of Belize. After fending off sharks and shooting permits, living off the sea, you know? I know, bro. Bro. <laughs> Shred the gnar. <laughs>